Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. As always, if you enjoy these videos, make sure to hit that like button. It helps out the channel a lot and it inspires me to keep going with this. Uh, anyway, today we've got a match against a squad that is absolutely about scary as balls. They're working with pretty much all Legends, Pseudo Legends, and, you know, Roserade and Infernape. But, of course, I'm working with my team of absolute units here who are not afraid of anything. And let's go ahead and get ourselves right into the match. They are going to lead off with their Infernape. I'm thinking, you know what, I might toss out my Ape as well. Young Planet of the Apes out here. And in comes the Primeape. So, obviously, the Superior Monkey. I have fucking boxing gloves. I'm just ready to go. But... Uh, this matchup isn't ideal for me, you know, I can go for the Earthquake being Choice Scarf, I can outspeed, but this thing is likely Focus Sash, um, so I don't want to lose my Primeape too early, because it is useful for things like the Tyranitar, and just overall really nice to have a, uh, have a fast dude in the back there. So, I'm going to U-turn, and I decide to go into my Seviper. Now, my team kind of lacks a good switch in to uh, Infernape, but they do go for the close combat here, and that does a whole bunch of damage to my boy, and uh, that hurts a lot. But, um, I'm thinking they're probably going to end up staying in here and just go right for a Flare Blitz and take me out. Um, which, you know, seems like the obvious option. So I decided to switch into the Grumpig here with Thick Fat. I probably should have gone into Grumpig, uh, in the first place there. But, I actually expected them to go for U-Turn with the Infernape, which is why I did not. So, uh, we actually end up in a double switch here as they go to Garchomp and I bring in the Grumpig, who is kind of late to the party. He's thinking... I uh, did not expect to see you here, good sir. I got my extra springy tail, uh, or am I just happy to see you? Uh, it ends up going for a crunch here, and that is extremely unfortunate because that knocks me out and um, just gets a critical hit for the overkill. But I have not seen a guard chomp run crunch in a long time. I mean, the dude's got chomp in his name, so you could always expect to get hit by a crunch, but that one catches me by surprise, and you hate to see it. Grumpig goes down, kind of the MVP of the team, and now I am playing from behind. So I decided to go into Treesif, who can obviously take an Earthquake, get knocked down to Sturdy. And rather than going for some damage off on this thing, I want to set up my Stealth Rock. Uh, that's because it's super useful on Pokemon like the Infernape. Obviously, there's an Articuna over there. Um, and I just kind of felt like I wanted to prioritize getting up those rocks. Uh, the main reason is that if I went for Earthquake here, it wouldn't do too much to the Garchomp. Um, but my plan was essentially to get up my Stealth Rock, then go for a Sucker Punch, knock this thing down to range where potentially something like Primeape uh, can pick it off. So, now I go for the Sucker Punch, hit him with my little cheerleader pom-poms, and it unfortunately doesn't quite knock this thing to half after its Life Orb damage. It is going to look like this thing is going to be manageable, but it's still closer than I would like it to be. So, uh, down goes the Sudowoodo, and you, you hate to see that as well, but at least I was able to get up my Stealth Rock, um, and now I'm able to freely switch back into Primeape, who at this range should be able to knock this thing out with the close combat, although it is quite close. But I'm just going to go for the old Puncheroo. Uh, he wants to conserve the shark there and ends up switching into Suicune, which has honestly been the bane of my existence for literally as long as this thing has existed. Um, because when you bring in NU teams to a Suicune fight, it's just going to it's going to outbulk you and it's going to calm mind. And then it's going to rest, and then it's going to just be an asshole overall with his stupid flowy ribbons over there. God, but, you know, close combat doesn't do much to this thing, and I kind of have to figure out a plan. If this thing is going to start setting up calm minds, it's going to be a bad day for your boy. Um, and I'm actually going to end up switching into my Seviper here. So the thought process is this. This thing is going to go for a calm mind. I can then bring in Seviper, potentially trick it um, to get it to not be able to you know, set up any further and lock itself into a move, but it actually just roars me and brings back in uh, the primate. Young, young Donut Hole is like, oh hey, didn't, uh, didn't didn't plan on seeing you again so soon. I mean, the roar is kind of an interesting play uh, because they don't actually have any hazards or anything, so it kind of just puts me back in the same situation. Gets a turn of life orb, or uh, leftover recovery, but I just end up you turning right back out of there. And I'm thinking, do I just do this? I'm just going to do the same exact thing. And so Viper's like, what are you what are you doing to me, man? I come out here. This thing just yells at me, and then now I'm back, but he actually ends up staying in and going for the Scald this time. Um, I luckily do live that and do not get burned, which is nice. And so Viper is like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to maybe do some shit here. So this is a choice specs, so Viper. So I'm actually going to opt to go for the Giga Drain here. It could uh, do a decent chunk of damage, plus bring me back to the point where I can take another Scald. Uh, but he actually ends up switching into the... Uh, the Garchomp here on the Giga Drain, and to my surprise, that actually knocks it out. So Specs of Viper knocking out pretty much the absolute arch nemesis second to 
fucking Zangoose as uh, the, the ground land shark goes down. And that is amazing. And it's gotta be one of the only like five times in history that has happened. But uh, now they get a free switch. They go into the Articuno, who's looking extra dull and shiny, which is kind of, you know, it doesn't make any sense. But uh, I actually stay in. And my reasoning for this was I kind of expected it to just go ahead and take me out with a freeze dryer or an ice beam. Um, I figure Saviper at this range is not going to be helpful to me. I can't really outspeed anything. And I was like, just knock me out. But it ends up going for the Roost as I hit the Giga Drain. And with that spec, it's actually going to be able to do a decent amount to this thing. Um, but the Roost is annoying, obviously, because, you know, getting that half health was nice on the Stealth Rock, but uh, it just lands on the ground real quick. You, every time you use Roost, I feel like you should take Stealth Rock damage again. Holy shit, Game Freak, hire me, bro. Um, I actually end up living the attack there. I'm able to get off another uh, Giga Drain, which is pretty damn nice. I mean, this thing can just Roost up again here, so I'm like, okay, maybe I shouldn't just stay in here and keep doing the same damn thing. So I am going to switch out, and I'm going to bring in Primeape. Now, the reason for that... It's because I know Primeape can for sure at least take one more attack from this thing, and um, I can hit it hard. So, ends up going for the Ancient Power, as they probably just wanted to get the stat boost there and, while finishing off the Viper. Um, but, I'm going to end up going for, right for the close combat here, as I really need to put Rock Slide on this damn Primeape. I swear to God how many times I need Rock Slide, but I mean, close combat does do the job, as that is going to take care of Articuno. Shout out to this dude for using Articuno, one of the... Lesser used legends ever, obviously because of Stealth Rock, but uh, we, we love to see him. So, now they get a free switch and they decide to go into the Roserade. And obviously I cannot really touch this Roserade with the close combat. And Wilbur is looking highly important for me uh, moving forward. So, I'm going to conserve this fluffy fella and I'm going to switch back into the Viper, essentially just to die. I'm expecting probably just a Sludge Bomb as it does go for the Giga Drain here and that takes me out. So Viper is effectively used as death fodder, and now this allows me a free switch, and boys, it is butterfree time. There's never been a better time to switch into butterfree uh, than on a freaking Roserade, as this thing, you know, it can hit me pretty hard with a sludge bomb, but, um, you know, I can, I can potentially start setting up here. And butterfree actually looks like I have a pretty decent matchup uh, against the rest of their team, as I've kind of whittled down the Suicune, and boys, it's happening. So, I'm gonna go for the sleep powder here, as I expect them probably not to want to stay in as they have stuff like the, you know, the, the, the Tyranitar, in comes Suicune. So, uh, young flowy boy comes in, sparkly as hell, and I guess the sparkles were yeah, a little bit too much for Butterfree, I just end up missing the freaking Sleep Powder. And, uh, I mean, that's fine, because obviously I can outspeed, I can go for it again, as long as you don't miss twice Sleep Powder, we're still cool. So I go for it again, I do actually end up landing it. And now is when I tell Butterfree to essentially clock into his part-time job as a janitor because this dude about to do some sweeping. Um, so sweep, sleeping Suicune is pretty nice here. This allows me to essentially just set up some quiver dances for free. Um, I think I'll need a few to be able to knock this thing out, but as long as it stays asleep, at least for like one turn here, I can get up a free quiver dance. So I am actually Life Orb, um, so I'm able to get a little extra damage. I should probably be running uh, Focus Ash on this thing in hindsight, but... I'm rocking maximum damage Butterfree out here, boys. I'm just, you see those wings? Those are not actually wings. Those are brooms because, you know, sweeping. So, Suicune does stay asleep, which is nice. Um, I got that nice little quiver dance up, and I'm thinking, okay, I should probably not get greedy. I know this thing is probably going to be working with Ice Beam or something, so I'm just going to go for a Bug Buzz here. And I'm thinking at least with one quiver dance, I'm able to outspeed the rest of their team. Uh, plus, I can put things asleep like the Tyranitar that I can't one-hit KO. So that is essentially my plan. I've got enough to be able to outspeed, and now we're going to just do some damage. So it does actually stay asleep. One more Bug Buzz is going to take this thing out. And uh, Butterfree taking out a Suicune. Just some, some situations you're not used to seeing out here, and it's, it's glorious. So uh, down goes Water Doggo. Getting hurt by some Life Orb, but it doesn't really matter too much as they decide to go into Infernape, which is an interesting play because after a Quiver Dance, uh, Butterfree does outspeed. Plus, I do have the Air Slash, so maybe they were expecting uh, something else in that fourth slot, but I, you know, I'm just gonna slash the old Air right on top of old Monkey's fiery hairdo, and uh, that does take care of it. So Butterfree killing an Infernape is also another sight we love to see, and uh, it's, Butterfree's rolling out here. Honestly, this Mon is a force to be reckoned with. I don't know why Ash left this thing behind, he could have just been, he could have been sweeping everybody with him, but instead he's like, see ya. So in comes Tyranitar. And I have a couple options here. Either I go right for the Bug Buzz, get enough damage to where I can chip this thing, uh, and then easily just knock it out. 
later on, or I go for the Sleep Powder to preserve the Butterfree Sweep. I'm gonna go for the Sleep Powder because it seems like the better move here. Uh, I do land it and I'm like, oh hell yes, this is amazing. I don't give a shit about the sand in my eyes. And it turns out, this is the first Tyranitar I've seen in a very long time where it's actually Lumberry. So that is super unfortunate and he ends up landing a Rock Slide and down goes Butterfree. He almost made it happen. Uh, but definitely next time, buddy. So uh, really unfortunately unlucky there. Just this thing being life or uh, flumberry. Like what the fuck? What the, what the hell, man? But I do still have the Primate who obviously just comes in and just, you know, uh, knocks this thing out with the close combat. Now they have the Roserade and the Tyranitar left, of course. I decide to go for the close combat here, hoping they're just going to stay in. Uh, but they do end up switching into the Roselia. So here's actually a moment in time where I don't actually see this thing switch in. Uh, I kind of catch the amount of damage I did to it right at the end here and I'm thinking uh, after looking at that I'm like hold on is is that, an, is that a range for me to kill this thing if I get like a minimum damage uh, on this next close combat. Um, so I definitely should have paid attention and kind of been able to see how much damage that did. In hindsight this next close combat actually does kill but here's my thought process. I've got this unknown left. I want to get this dude in the match. I'm going to switch it in here just as death fodder uh, to die to a sludge bomb. So I'm thinking sludge bomb for sure is what kills primate. That's obviously what they're going to click here. Uh, and and uh, I can just basically then switch primate in after it takes another sandstorm recoil just for that extra insurance that my next close combat kills. But it goes for giga drain, which I entirely did not think about. Like an idiot, because I um, I mean, I saw, I saw a Giga Drain earlier in the match, and I really should have, should have expected that. It wouldn't have actually even killed Primeape, I don't think. Uh, actually, it would have actually probably after the special defense drop, but that is wildly unfortunate because I have to bring back in Primeape my last Mon, and my only option here is to go for Earthquake. Close combat basically, obviously doesn't knock this thing out, and it drops my special defense to where it then can kill me with a Giga Drain. So I go for the Earthquake. Reason for that is because I know two of it kills, and if it just Giga Drains again, I should be able to live that. I do live it with 23, and it is coming right down to the wire here. I had the win condition, but this just goes to show uh, that, you know, sometimes I make the wrong play. But, you know, it, I guess it, it happens to everybody, and that's literally the game you play. But I really thought I would just be extra careful and switch out there so this thing would take one more Sandstorm damage turn, and then just kill it with a close combat, and then kill the Tyranitar as it comes in. But... That quite did not work out for me, as now I am actually able to take care of the Roselia, um, but so now they're down to their last Mon, which is going to be that Tyranitar. Um, so, as you'll see here, Tyranitar sitting at a pretty hefty amount of health, and I'm going to need either a super high roll Earthquake or a crit to be able to knock this thing out. Uh, so this, the freaking Choice Carve has forsaken me here. Uh, boy looks fresh in it, but it's, it's allowed me to not click close, co close combat. I have to go for the Earthquake here. Uh, of course, I do go first, and Godzilla lives it in red health. So that is wildly unfortunate, and that just kind of all is a domino effect where where if I was able to just go for uh, the bug buzz on that thing with uh, when I had Butterfree out rather than the Sleep Powder, I would have gotten enough chip damage to the point where none of that would have mattered and Earthquake would have killed, but it all adds up, and uh, that is going to be the end of the match there. So still a really close game, and I had a lot of fun in that one, playing against a very scary team with the Mons I was using, but... Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I do appreciate all the support, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.